Peace, peace, this is your host, Selah Shalom. And this is a Cosmon teachings in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible of Waspi. And the topic of today is called the image of the beast 600. Now, the image of the beast is an idol that is worshipped in replacement of the creator. Anything that is an idol and is of worship is the image of the beast. An example of the image of the beast would be, for example, the image of Jesus Christ. Another image would be the image of Osiris. Another image would be the image of all the Egyptian and Sumerian gods. Any of them deemed worshipful will be considered the image or the nature of the beast. Now the Creator is the only one worthy of worship and the Creator is not in the image of anything created. Everything created is the Creator's creation and we are not to worship His creation but the Creator who created it. Now the image of the beast that we're most familiar with today is the image of Jesus and this is the image I'm going to be referring to and 600 years is basically the time period that it took for this image to be um, created and modified and brought to the people as the image of God. Now, the time of the beast started 300 BC. The third century BC is when is when is when is is when the 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 beginning of the beast image as we know it today. And it started with the Ptolemies when Alexander the Great invaded Egypt. And the Ptolemies took over Egypt. And, um, and Ptolemy Isoter, who reigned after um, Alexander, he is the one responsible for erecting an image made out of two deities, which was Osiris and Apis the Bull, which in return is um, Serapis. Now Serapis is your precursor to Jesus. When Serapis was created, he was considered the savior. He had Serapiums, which was temples dedicated to the worship of Serapis, the savior. Now this is during the third, second, coming on down to the first century BC is when the image of Serapis is being worshipped. That's the image of the beast before it became modified into Jesus. So when we come down to the first century, Serapis is still being worshipped because you have a couple of um, you have a couple of European philosophers of that day who spoke of um, the Serapis worship, like Hadrian, who referred to Christians as followers of uh, Serapis. So from 300 BC to 300 AD is 600 years from Serapis to Jesus where this image is erected in replacement of the Creator and this image is to be worshipped. Now Jesus, some try to say is Yahshua, but that's not true either. Jesus is a myth. Aesus, Zeus, if you want to use the terminology in the Greek. But the story of Jesus is a collection of stories and they stamped Aesu or Zeus as the image of the beast for that story. You see what I'm saying? Yahshua has nothing to do with this. Although some of your story, although some of Yahshua's account may have got caught up in the New Testament. But it's a collection of different stories. You have um, Apollyonis of Tayana. A lot of the, the historians of that day spoke that he was the Jesus of the first century. And then in the Talmud, you have Yahshua being mentioned as, as a sorcerer. But none of these things coincide with Jesus of the New Testament. So the image of Jesus is a false image. It's a myth. It was created the same way Serapis was created in the 3rd, 2nd century BC. Likewise was Jesus, the image of Jesus created from the 1st, 2nd, 3rd century BC as they perfected. They modified the changes. Leading on up to our present time where you have many Christians and Muslims and Jews believe in Jesus Christ 
as you as the redeemed savior of humanity. You know, and then 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 the creator. Like it, like as the creator is second to Jesus. That's what a lot of people believe. You know what I mean? And that's the nature of the beast. And that's the image of the beast. They got you worshiping the idol in replacement of the creator. And this is bondage. So when you cross over in spirit, you're going to be looking for this image that you've been worshiping on earth. And that's how they're going to hoodwink you into the spirit world, into these false kingdoms, to get you to worship these false gods. So the image of the beast today is the image of Jesus. That's the most dominant image we have on the planet that people worship. You can find the image of Jesus on the four corners of the globe. You see that? You ain't gonna find you, Buddha is out there, but he ain't as effective as Jesus. You have all the other deities, but Jesus put the stamp on it. That's the most current false deity we have in the replacement of the Creator. And coming from the Owaspi, that was Luamung and his host of angels that would be behind these false accounts or these false images on establishing Christianity because Lu Among is the false god for, for Christianity. See that? So the image of the beast is Jesus Christ as we know it hanging on a cross, blue eyed blonde hair. And you have millions upon millions worshiping this image. So you see in the bondage and slavery when these spirits or these people die and they cross over in spirit and they, and, they, and, they, and they become subservient slaves to this angel named Luamon who established his doctrine thousands and thousands of years ago. And his doctrine has been perfected. And his harvest and magnitude of his kingdom has spread and has become so abundant. Now people are just being born after death into this, into this heavenly kingdom becoming subservient slaves into this, into this paradigm into this heavenly kingdom. Likewise on earth, we born into slavery, into this economic system, or this this um this judicial system, we born into slavery. Like in the Matrix. We born in a bondage. Only way to be free if you're gonna go camp out in the woods and live off the land. And only a few is doing that. So at the end of the day, you know we dealing with the nature of the beast on many levels. So with that, I'd like to say peace and blessings. Shalom.